Hello, my name is Mark Boyer, and this uh, video is on 1 Corinthians 15. Um, it needs to be addressed. It's a very heavy passage, and uh, it's all about the return of uh, the Jesus Christ and the immortality and the rising of the dead. Uh, how else can a passage like that be anything but heavy? Now, let me read from, it's all about that. It basically starts off and laments throughout the passage that if you don't believe in the resurrection, uh, your faith was in vain. Okay, it's all about the resurrection. And at the beginning here, in verse 315, it says there, For what I perceive and pass on to you as first importance is as follows. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that he appeared to more than five hundred of his brothers at the same time. Most of them are still living. That was written two thousand years ago. Okay. Though some have fallen asleep, then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all he appeared to me, also as to one abnormally born. Now, I'm saying I'm this one who is abnormally born. I can't find any scripture out there or any preacher who can explain as to one abnormally born okay and i definitely hold the abnormal birth uh, on this i'll make a reference to noah okay it says there that the end times will be somewhat like the story of noah okay he uh was the last of to be pure okay and modern day people interpret that that his genes were pure because there were nephilim at that time there were giants at that time there were dark forces on the world in the time of noah okay and he was of pure genetics okay now me my abnormal birth says that I am the last free man, naturally born free man in the world, who has clear title. Okay, period. I can make that claim. Uh, my birth number is 000665. In 2009, I tried my best to fulfill Isaiah 3. Of being the nobody that rises against the noble and says to one of his brothers, You take this cloak, you be the leader of people, never make me leader of people. Okay, now I tried and failed, but that scripture says it'll happen that way as well because there's a passage and a half there. And then it goes, in that day, everything is beautiful. What can I say? Uh, I'm pushing for the fact that the resurrection of the dead is about to happen. And I really do hold the abnormal birth of 1 Corinthians 15. And it's not just the fact that you know, lots of people can say they have abnormal births. But I'm also delivering the message of the new covenant which will trigger the new creation and the return of the dead to life and uh, paradise on earth is here not us going to heaven paradise on earth is here now again let me point off there i'll jump a paragraph or so and it's basically saying, again, so the, for the full paragraph there, it's basically saying, uh, without the resurrection, 
update the message was missed. Okay. Now that has to be heavy. I'm saying I'm this guy with the abnormal birth. Okay. Now to back this, I'll use this pair. This the, the, the following sentence. Okay. But Christ was indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. For since the dead came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. Okay? That's in future tense, 2,000 years. All preachers interpret that as that happened when Jesus Christ is here. But it, it happens again. Now, I'm saying, okay, it says, For as of Adam all die, so in Christ all must be made alive. Now, I can honestly say I am the one like Adam. Okay? And he brought the dead to life through human means, through sin. And I'm saying that if the bar goes and changes their oath as from serving the sovereign's interest to serving the Creator, as outlined in One People's Public Trust, we will fulfill Luke eleven twenty nine on. And in the end of that, it says, And now someone greater than Jonah is here. And the beginning of that passage of Luke 11, 1 to 11, 29, to, And now there's one greater than Jonah, can honestly be called good tribulation. End of story. Okay. Luke, Matthew, equally so. Matthew 12, 29 on is bad first fruit. And it's talking about the same situation. And we can carry on there. But, okay, let me carry on here, okay? I'm saying very strongly that I'm the one like Adam. And that's the return of, because of the new covenant. Let me carry on. But each at his turn. Christ, the first fruit. Correct. Christ died on the cross for our sins. And then it says, then, when he comes, those who belong to him. Correct. So many have a strayed away from the fact that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Okay. I'm the messenger before that. And there's twisted language here. That I personally, uh, it, it, it grates at me. But the next it says, then he, the end will come. That when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. As I said, Tribulation. Okay. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he has put everything under his feet. Now when I say everything. Let me, oh, I'll stop there. This is where, one of the big clues of upholding God's creation. Okay. And there's two everythings. God is everything spiritual. And he created the creation. And this is everything of substance. Okay? And that's the definition of monotheism. Now, I'm saying if we go from upholding God to upholding God's creation, uh, we uh, inherit the earth. We share in the burden of upholding his creation. We don't, we won't be greater than God. We will share in the burden and share in the glory. It's the return of paradise on earth. It's the mindset of the angels. And that's what's being offered. The mindset of those before Adam. Okay? That was paradise on earth. And that's where we're going back. And it's with the grand awakening and the bringing of the dead to life. And this is what I'm trying to do. And I, right now, 
Everything's exactly as a prophecy. No, but nothing will happen until that day. And I don't have a problem with in that day. Uh, now, let me carry on. I said I'd stop there and explain something. Now, back to the passage 9. 15, 9. Now, when I say that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this is does not include God himself. God is everything spiritual. Who put everything under Christ? Okay. Now, I'm saying that he put the creation itself under Christ. And Jesus Christ upholds his creation since he was nailed to the cross. And uh, what can I say? That's my faith. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him who has put everything under him, so that God may be all and in all. Okay? Now, I'm saying that the creation itself must be returned to the Creator. Given to Jesus Christ, who returns once and for all, conquers death. And we all become spiritual flesh. The, the, the scary passages are intense in here because it basically says we're all going to die and gain spiritual flesh in the twinkle of an eye. And that's how big the Grand Awakening is. Okay, The New Covenant will not be conceived by a human. Is a 1 Corinthians 2 clue. Well, I'm the only one who's de delivering the message of the New Covenant, which is the message of righteousness. And it's supposed to release us from the spirit of stupor. And authority from the spirit of death. And it's all done in one word. That changes everything. Um, what can I say? It indicates here that it's done over my dead body. Okay? Which I don't have a problem with. Okay? And that's covered under the biblical story of Judah. Okay? Apparently Judah... He said that Jesus Christ told him that it was necessary for him to die so that the spirit within him um, is set free. Okay. And Judas painted himself as a nice guy for that. Okay. Now, I'm saying flat out that I was swallowed by the, the, the Holy Spirit himself uh, shortly after being killed. Uh, on the eve of Remembrance Day 2004, which marked the 3,700 evenings and mornings of Daniel's prophecy. Uh, the 1,290 days of Daniel's prophecy occurred two years ago. And as to that prophecy, it says, you know, Liars will make deals with liars, but it won't last long. While well, it's lasted two years, it might last another. But we really are in our end times. Um, one people's public trust fulfills uh, the fact that I do call myself Jonah. I have valid, you know, I, what else can I say? Uh, in here, to carry on on... Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, it says here not to worry about the one who is like Adam, for he becomes a life-giving spirit. Okay? And it tends to indicate here that it's over my dead body, which I don't have the slightest problem with. In fact, I've been killed three times in the last nine years by the hands of Vancouver police. And, uh, the uh, 
The accomplice to my second murder of the 3,700 evenings and mornings is actually still in my case file holder. Um, what can I say? Um, we live in uh, perilous times. Well, what can I say? Uh, one People's Public Trust clearly indicates what I've been saying for the last Eight years, seven years, six years, five years, four years, three years. It's not about me. And that's right. Okay. After me going through oh, this side oh, so much trouble and pain, here this public trust challenge from Heather of One People's Public Trust happens. And what can I say? Corporations are being hauled on the aisle, you know. And the reality is, is I'll repeat it. Lawyers simply have to go into a back room and change their oath from serving the sovereign's interest, which was the original UCC trust. It was changed in 1776 to serving the sovereign's interest, but it became a banking term. Okay. And all Americans became sovereigns, were da 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 da, and it was by the people for the people. Well, now that's been turned into by the people for the economy. And one greater than Solomon is here, which I've, uh, is the second part of Luke 11 15. Uh, you know, everything is in place for one greater than Jonah to be here. To arrive. And that's my Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I had a, uh, a phenomenal near death experience, uh, back at the beginning of where I made the declaration of my free man status. And that evening I was killed. Okay. And, uh, uh, what can I say? Uh, there were 3,200 evenings and mornings. Because that morning I will, uh, I met uh, a man who looked exactly like me. And I'd met him 38 years before uh, when my father died when I was 13. And uh, at that time I was swallowed by the Spirit. And it was made clear to me it's not about you or me, it's about the one that's possessed me. Uh, there are several clergy who are convinced that I'm the Antichrist. I'm definitely a major character of our end times. And I'm like Noah. Uh, no one knows why the flood happened. Uh, Noah was just there giving the message that was important. Okay, And there's nothing more important than the new covenant with God. It's got our new contract with God that makes us all uh, into spiritual flesh. We all shine on like the moon and the stars and the sun. So says Isaiah. So says uh, this passage here in 1 Corinthians 15. It's we inherit the earth by sharing in the burden and therefore share in the glory of God. The creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay, to the glorious freedom of all God's children. And basically, uh, there are three hierarchies of paradise. Uh, there's those who will be 30 times better than they are now. And every one of those will be able to say, garden grow, garden will grow. Come up to an apple tree and go, could I have an apple please? And she will gladly give you an apple. Uh, it's paradise on earth. Okay. There'll be those, there'll be those who, 7,000 who are like stars, each with their own lusters. Okay. And there will live, they'll, there will be wonders. The realities open up with those 7,000. And uh, I, it's paradise on earth. Uh, there's room for everybody. And absolutely everybody's returning. 
we're facing interesting times. Will the bar repent? Change their way of thinking. Metanoia. Or they won't. Will it be the churches who do first? Or the bar? Or the politicians? You know, I'm convinced that the oneness and the, of the glory of God is triggered with the bar walking into a room and voting to change, to stand under one people's public trusts, uh, trust to return to serving the Creator. And in this way, the law will be spiritual. Because technically, you'll have to walk out of there and stage a court date where all debt in the world is forgiven. Uh, that I don't do. If you want to use my case law precedent, okay, I got a default judgment that five years ago reduced the weight of the world. If every grain in the world was a dollar, uh, my damage award was greater than that. My damage award now is greater than if the entire heliosphere of the sun was uh, the size of a grain of sand, in, in, in the units of a grain of sand, and everyone would be worth a dollar. Okay, that's how big my damage award is, and that fulfills an Isaiah 40 prophecy. The reality exists that in Isaiah 40, it really is called comfort to all God's children. And it's being presented again. I offered that two years ago. And it was turned down. Um, ah, what can I say? It, it sure looks like they want to go to hell. But then that's exactly what prophecy says. Okay? Authority is being tested. All glory will be put upon them. And I'm the first to admit that evil was done so that good could result. I've heard from the free men movement. They say that authority has a plausible reason of why they did it. And it was done through warehouse receipts. Warehouse receipts created a cash pool where every one of us is worth at least everyone in the commonwealth and in what's called the free world, uh, where the Rothschilds rule. All have a collective net worth. Every citizen of where the Rothschilds rule have about $5 billion worth of money in assets because they've been using us as cargo on a ship of fools to fund uh, everything that's happened. Okay? Now, every time a loan is paid, the money goes in the trust account. And it's never spent. It, the Rothschilds don't get it. They're, it's these trustees get it. And the trust accounts, uh, derivatives are just sucking from these trust accounts. There's literally $5 billion worth of money each. For each person. Uh, that's what Heather says in One People's Public Trust. I personally, my math came to $135 million each. Each. But that's still a lot of money. Uh, the purpose of that fund is so that when one day we say, hey, uh, we want to serve God, serve God and uphold God's creation, and we'll get, and we'll inherit the earth, and we want to get off this ship. Now, we can. There's enough money collectively there for a court challenge to be used to file and get us off the ship. Okay? They, no one really needs my damage award. Uh, they might use my damage file because it's sitting there. You can use my case file. You're welcome to it. Uh, my exit happens shortly after I'm revealed. Okay, or the message that I'm delivering. Okay, paradise is there for the taking, and good first fruit is easily obtainable 
by just following the script of Luke 11, 29 on. Okay. I really am the messenger, you know, the Jonah. Okay. There will be no miracles. Okay. Except for the sign of Jonah. Okay. The, the queen of the south, after me pursuing seven years of there being a queen to the south and me challenging it, which was the bar and the law society and politicians and diligent comes up this genuine queen of the south. It, she, you know, uh, the one people's public trust has all the markings of, uh, the return of paradise on earth where the bar goes into a room and changes its oath to serve the creator. It creates a case file and it redeems all debt in the world. And when all debt in the world is paid, the only remaining debt will be the eternal debt of love for our neighbor. That's a Romans 13 promise. And the only question is, is authority coming along? Or are they going to fall for the dark forces that are overwhelming them? Okay. Uh, the spirit of death rules in authority. And uh, tribulation is being faced. Okay. Good tribulation is expressed in uh, 1 Corinthians 15. It's expressed in Luke 11. It's expressed in uh, most of Luke's passages. Luke 21. Okay. Bad first fruit is expressed in Matthew 24, Matthew 12. And the stories are uh, one's the story of good first fruit, the other's the story of bad first fruit. I have all the markings of being the advocate of John's gospel. And uh, I'm the one before Jesus Christ returns. Exactly as to Luke 11 says. The one greater than Jonah is here. And that's the return of the living God. Jesus Christ in flesh. Well, in spiritual flesh. Just like we all will be. It's called paradise on earth. It's been a long time coming, and it's here forever. And I'm doing my best to trigger it. Uh, thank you.